Hello everyone and uh, welcome to Lilybrook. So this is how to improve your golf without actually improving your golf. So the first thing I've done today is I've warmed up in the net. Okay, granted, I can't see the ball flight. I can't make corrections, but I can feel where on the face I'm striking it and I get loose and I get warmed up. Point number two is go and practice your um, <laughs> I've lost the thread. I've lost the thread. Not for the first time. Go and practice your scoring putts. Now, I didn't quite get time today. Um, and that isn't the reason why I missed that six footer. The brakes here are a little subtle. I saw that as just being outside right and it just wasn't. I hit it too hard anyway. But practice your four footers before you go out. This means get into the golf course sometime before you do the tee off. The third point I've already mentioned is about treating every hole as a par three. What club are you comfortable hitting into the green? So what club off the tee do you need to hit to get to that point? Here's point number four. We've got the fifth hole behind us here. Let me go back to normal zoom. So here's the fifth green. We can see here that the flag is just beyond the bunker. There's a mound running down here towards the flag. So any ball that comes in and misses to the right, you're never going to hold your chip by the flag. So we know that if we're in trouble, we want to miss left. So you'd collect information as you go around the course. There we go. I know where I want to hit my second shot. If I'm in the middle of the fairway, perfect, then we go right down the banner. But if I'm in bother, I know I want to get it left. So that's number three. Well, the second shot wasn't a bad shot. It was only a little bit off. But the easiest shot in golf is the chip. Any shot that only requires the club head to travel a short distance has got to be easier than a full swing. So practice your chipping. And then you'll leave yourself some shorter par putts than if you don't practice your chipping. It's that simple. Well, the next bit is a bit harsh, really, but it's play with better golfers. You'll pick up their habits, you'll see what their short game is like, you'll see what their routine is like for playing golf, and it will sink in, you will improve. If you're going round and round and round every weekend with the same group of guys who are shooting 90 or more, and they're having a laugh and they don't care about it, and they don't want to get better, and you're the only one in the group who wants to get better, then you have to go away. You have to play with other guys. You have to play serious golf, not banter golf. You're not going to get better playing banter golf, I can assure you of that. Next hole. First time out with the driver. 
and this is the biggest, hugest slice you've ever seen. It's out onto the fifth fairway, right to the far edge of the fairway. I mean, it was that wide. Now, I didn't record the second shot. I was a little embarrassed with people coming the other way. But I hit 7-9 over the top of the trees, into the green, and this is the result. So, if you hit a stinker, don't panic. Just work out your next shot. So, if you want to get better, you really want to play with better golfers, with better attitudes to the game of golf, really. So, um, what else? Well, there's two people you need to avoid. Generally speaking, they're wearing the same pair of spikes, if you know what I mean. So, I recently played golf with a 26 handicapper who proceeded to take my golf swing apart and my mental approach to the game apart and yet they have no idea what it's like to play golf at the sharp end and they never will they're off about 26 they're never going to get any better that was obvious to see so for them getting the ball in the air and in the vague direction of the green is a good shot but for me it's not getting the ball on the green is a good shot and the other thing the other person that you must avoid is the person who tells you about all of the hazards on the golf course usually as you've addressed the ball and you're stood over it and you're just about to start your swing and they'll tell you about the out of bounds or the bunkers around the green if you're on a par three or something you know the, I was on a 129 yard par three with a nine iron in my hand and it was perfect, it was absolutely perfect. And then, just as I get over this ball, there's a little voice that says, oh, the, the green's surrounded by bunkers, and if you miss left, you'll lose your ball in the gorse. Well, I had to start my process again. And I turned to them and I said, well, the only thing I'm thinking about is that stick in the ground down there with a flag on it. And as the green slopes left to right, I want to be right of it and I did go right of it nine feet right of it but if you've got people who are taking you apart and telling you about the hazards on the golf course when you don't really want to hear it don't play golf with them again it's as simple as that yeah pain in the ass they think they know what they're talking about but they don't it's funny how the least qualified in golf seem to be the people who most want to air their opinion so after you've played with them the one time don't play with them again avoid them on the tee sheet so I'm on five stroke index one I've made my normal mistake on this gentle dog leg to the left is I've squirted it a bit to the right 187 this isn't the place to attempt to make my par now to beat your handicap, you do have to par the holes that you get shots on. But this isn't the one. If I was out there in the fairway, yeah, bang on. That's where I'm going to try and make my par, get me net birdie. But not from here. What i got to do from here is put myself into a position where I can chip and putt and get me par. I can't make my par with this club. I can only make, make a, a double bogey with this club. So... Don't try too hard to make up for a poor tee shot on a shot hole. You get another chance later on to make a, make a net birdie or even a net eagle. For the moment, let's get that net par, move on. If you remember on the second tee, and I pointed out at the fifth green, I said we got to miss it left. That's exactly what I've done. I've missed it left. I couldn't take on the green with this, out of the rough, poor lie. So we put ourselves in a position where 
the net par is certainly guaranteed but if we hit a good chip then we might get a par net birdie and I've avoided the double One of the most important parts in getting better is knowing how far you hit the ball through the air with your average shot. Now that was average. I was in the first cut, so I didn't make absolutely perfect clean contact with the ball, but because it was my average shot, I made it onto the green. Too many people don't know. They count the carry the bounce and the roll all you're interested in is how far it goes through the air you can control how far it bounces and rolls by playing a decent golf ball and keeping your grooves clean I'm surprised how many play with filthy grooves so you need to know your averages with certainly all your scoring clubs it doesn't matter so much with the four iron or the five iron perhaps but uh, six iron down, you need to know that an average shot is going to get there. And I did. When I record 18 holes, I've got over an hour of footage to edit. So all the toing and froing from the camera, all the pitch mark repairing, all the divot replacing, you don't get to see. I do do it all, but look how much time I spend over a putt. It's long enough without being excessive. And usually, your first instinct is the correct one. Well, this is downhill, and it's right to left, and I don't want to lose control of the ball. So it's a bit of a dribble down there, but I'll take a par from the wrong side of the flag. Well, the next bit is ego. On a par three, it's playing uh, 162 to the flag. It's uphill a bit, so it's going to play more like 170. But I don't want to go past the flag because I want an uphill putt. Now, would it bother you if you were playing with my mate Rob, who's taken an eight iron for the same yardage? It doesn't bother me. You've got to take the club that's right for you. Don't you just love those people who say never up, never in? Well, the ball doesn't go in when it goes four or five feet past either. So all these guys who say, well, you gave the hole a chance. Well, you didn't because a ball traveling too fast will not go in. So a lag should leave your tappings, not four or five footers. Well, the last thing I'd say this driver is for putting the ball in play where you want it. I can't reach the top of the hill here and there's no real point in me swinging out my socks in order to do so. Getting an extra five yards won't do me any more favours. If I try and swing out my socks, I'll probably make a mess of it.
trying to hit that any harder wouldn't have helped anyway hope this has been helpful cheerio